Welcome to What's the Score, a series solely dedicated to the support of Central Florida's small business and entrepreneurs. Donated as a community service by AM660, The Answer, and Salem Communications. Now, here's Christopher Hart and Rich Jekyll. Hello, and welcome again to What's the Score, the show designed to help you come up with that winning combination for your business. Hi, once again, I am Christopher Hart of the American Adversaries Radio Show, along with my cohort and co-host. Cohort, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Rap, rap partner, uh, Rich Jekyll. <laughs> Yo, bro. <laughs> of score, of course. And Rich, how you been this week? I've been fine, Christopher, fine, fine. Okay, Glad excellent. to see you're still here and kicking. Yeah, and same to you, same yep. to you. And yeah, we'll be talking to Paul in the near future. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, he's on a cruise this weekend, though, enjoying the good life. And we hope you're doing the same, folks. Uh, that is, enjoying the good life, not necessarily on a cruise. But if you are out there on a cruise listening to us, well, welcome to the show. Uh, and once again, the SCORE is a uh, nonprofit uh, volunteer organization that provides mentoring services to up-and-coming businesses and established businesses. Right, Rich? That's absolutely correct. In the uh, central Florida area, we see about uh, three or four thousand businesses a year through our center over there. That people and come in to take advantage of your services. Yeah, to take advantage of the score services plus other providers. Does anybody ever have to wait in line? Oh yeah, yeah. They have to wait in line usually for the bathroom, but other than that, no. <laughs> not, fine. not for the mentoring no, services. No, no, anyway. they're okay. No, usually we have two counselors on, so there's not a problem. Well, you know, uh, this weekend uh, marks the beginning of February, February, and uh, you've got an action-packed month over there at SCORE in the Entrepreneur Center in the Fashion Square Mall. And 17 sem- seminars you're going to uh, cram 17 in. seminars. I'd like to thank our uh, uh, vice chair of education, John Tassi. He has really outdone himself this uh, this month. I, I can't go through all the seminars. Well, you do have uh, three new ones, and we'll mention those. But, of course, the beginning seminar, You, Your Business Idea, How SCORE Can Help, which is free, is once again going to be offered the 4th of February. That's this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m., and that's at the Entrepreneur Center. You don't need a res- reservation or registration. Just come on in. And if you've only heard about it on the radio, please tell them that you heard about it on the radio. That's You, Your Business Idea, How SCORE Can Help. And that's you know basically to introduce you to SCORE and, and what you might expect uh, to get out of your relationship with SCORE. And you, by the way, you can find all of these seminars at their website, scoreorlando.org. And uh, by the way, the three new ones, Rich, there's a, a Managing Human Resources Issues Seminar. Human Resources Issues, is that having to do with like government regulations, insurance, and things like that? Uh, that would be people management. Okay. In the old days, we used to call it, uh, uh, God, what did we call it? Um, you, where you're managing people, you're making sure that they get paid, making sure that they're doing nothing illegal, right. and you're paying them correctly. That's all evolved into human resources now. All right. Well, I just pulled this Personnel. Up. That's Personnel. what we there call it, go. personnel. Yeah, back in the old days. Uh, this is being uh, this uh, particular seminar is being presented by Paychex, and it'll have to do with hiring and firing, if you will, and employee management uh Issues. So, uh, if you're if you've got employees or are planning on hiring some employees, that would be a beneficial seminar for you. And that'll be February 26th. And then there are a couple of new other ones that are actually going to debut in March. <clears throat> Excuse me. One is the top 10 HR issues. That's human resources issues. Once again, presented by Paychecks, having to do with uh, more involved things like trouble on the job between employees, that sort of thing. And then getting started with events and registration. Uh, that uh, begins in March, and once again, all of these brand new seminars, as well as all the established seminars, you can find at scoreorlando.org. Rich, you know, one time up in Virginia, when I first uh, started out in our business, I fired a uh, director of an office. It happened to be the Tampa office, which I was responsible for, and uh, the woman said, "I'm not leaving." <laughs> so she just sit down and, and literally... I did exactly what I just did. I just sat there and looked at her and said, well, wait a minute, I fired you. Uh huh. She says, you can't fire me. Oh, yeah. You didn't fire. You didn't hire me. Therefore, you can't fire me. True story. And I said, well, who can fire you? And she said, the the CEO of the company up in Virginia Beach can fire me. Uh huh. I said, so I've got to get on the phone and call the CEO 
who put me in charge to fire you and make sure that you understand that he's firing you. And she says, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, did you do it? Well, absolutely. I didn't want any part of that. Now, that is a human resources uh, issue. And that's the sort of thing that you'll be learning about at the seminar in, at SCORE. Once again, scoreorlando.org is where you can find out all about those. Uh, some of the seminars have a, a minimal charge, $10, $30 is the most they charge for a seminar. Uh, but once again, the introductory seminar is free. They, but also, uh, there is a Veterans Business Initiative going on. Uh, this month, and this will be start. This is Thursday, the fifth, and uh, this will be at the National Entrepreneur Center once again, which is at the Fashion Square Mall. Uh, if you are a, a veteran and uh, would like to uh, have been thinking about starting a business for yourself or in beginning stages of doing just that, uh, this initiative is for you. And uh, if you uh, want to go, uh, please register at Career Source. CentralFlorida.com. You write all that out, type all that out. Uh, career Source Central Florida.com. And uh, once again, this is for veterans, and it's Thursday the 5th this week. It's not only for people that want to start a business, but there are employers attending each one of these things. There's eight sessions, and there's employers, regional and local employers, that are looking for people. So out of the last uh, one we had in August, we had 40 veterans, and eight of them got jobs out of this thing. Now, this is uh, for disabled veterans only? No. For any veteran? It's any veteran to help them, you know, once they're getting uh, released, to help them get back into the community and uh, help them with the employers that will be interested in hiring veterans. There you go. Which there are a lot. All right, so that's the Veterans Business Initiative, Thursday the 5th, and uh, we'd like you to pre-register for that at careersourcecentralflorida.com. Or if you need help registering, call the Entrepreneur Center. I'm sure they'd be glad to help you out over there. The phone number is 407-420-4844, and we'll be repeating this later on in in the show. So if you can't write it down now, just get yourself set up later on so you can write it down then. But the number, once again, is 407-420-4844. And by the way, the Entrepreneur Center is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. They welcome you to come in over there and check things out. they got some brochures, and anybody there will give you information about what goes on. On. And there's a lot more than just score that goes on over at the Entrepreneur Center. Oh, boy, Center, you just there? love it, don't you? <laughs> just a perfect leading. All right. That's uh, what's you called a softball say, pitch to you, Rich. Thank you. Now see if I can catch it. All right. You're supposed to hit it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, there are service providers, community service providers that uh, – that can help you, and they're all free. Every one of them is free. So there's the uh, Hispanic Business Initiative form, uh, <laughs> just Hispanic Business Initiative Fund. Okay. Thank you. And uh, there's also the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce, which is the largest in Florida. Is that right? Yeah, I just found that out today. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I knew that, but I just thought I'd give my guest the credit. Yeah, well, well, he's going to top you when, when he tells you that. Everybody bigger, tops bigger, bigger me. It doesn't that. matter. <laughs> okay, so there's many agencies here. And, you know, we've been talking in and out about import, export through uh, small businesses and all that stuff. Yep. And guess what? Guess what? You have some guests today. Very good. Good guests. There you go. And they happen to be sitting here right with us. That's right, folks. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Elizabeth Kreckel. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. All right. She is the project coordinator for the Central Florida International Trade Office. And along with her in the studio today, we have Kenneth Meradian? Meradian. Meradian. Meradian, and he's the director of the Orlando United States Export Assistance Center. So welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and um, I'd like to uh, ask you each if you would just give us a brief, uh, you know, what idea of what you do over the Entrepreneur Center. Uh, Ken, why don't we start with you? Okay. Uh, My office is a field office of the International Trade Administration. We help U.S. companies to distribute U.S. origin exports in foreign markets. We help U.S. companies to defend their commercial interests abroad. And we help foreign companies to invest in the United States. From the Orlando U.S. Export Assistance Center, we help uh, export-ready companies to uh, 
develop an export marketing strategy okay. and uh, find distribution, foreign buyers, et cetera. Okay. Uh, is there any charge to the people who come there for your assistance? That depends. I mean, uh, some of our services are customized, um, and the ones that are customized that have a counterpart in private industry, we do charge for. Uh, that is to not crowd out private investment, et cetera. Things that are inherently governmental in nature, we don't charge for. So business counseling, we don't charge for, or commercial advocacy. I can explain what that means, but okay, other well, of we'll our get, services, we'll get yeah. To that. Um, uh, in the couple of minutes we have left, uh, uh, Elizabeth, please tell us uh, what you do at the Central Florida International Trade Office. Well, the office just opened in March of 2014. And we are funded by Orange County Government and J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. What we do is we provide connections to those existing resources, some of them already at the National Entrepreneur Center. We also provide education. We uh, have developed a regional database that says what companies are in the area and which, where they're trading from, what port, and where the, the product is going. And then we have also hosted a few inbound trade missions. And these are all have to do with import-export, right? For Central Florida businesses. Yes. Okay. And um, once again, do is there a charge for your services when people come to your office? Are you in the same office or is it like separate offices over there? You're in different departments. We're co-location you? partners. So okay. we have individual offices, but we're in the same right. suite of offices. But you're, you're like on the federal government level. I'm the federal government. And you're local government level. We're pr- public and private. Okay. Orange County and J.P. Morgan Chase. Okay. Find a- us. A- any charge to the people who come? No. To you? Okay. So basically, your your funding comes from the other end of it because they're looking for people out there. Correct. Who are trying to start a business mm-hmm. in, in the import export business? How difficult? Well, I see we don't have much time in this segment. We'll get to that when we come back. Uh, but once again, um, can people just come and visit you over at the Entrepreneur Center? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. And can you as well? Um, I work on appointment only. I'm a one person shop. If I'm not in there, there's nobody to see, so I don't do walk ins. Okay. Do they? Do you set appointments by the? Uh, if you will, the receptionist phone number, do you have yeah. your own phone number? Yeah, your receptionist phone number is fine. Okay, which once again is 407-420-4844. And if you want to sit down and talk to Rich, you can make an appointment with him at that phone number, right, Rich? That's right, yeah. Especially if you want to take him out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good uh, one. You're on a roll today. You know? All right, yeah, there you go. Right? We're rolling, all right. And we hope you folks are rolling right along with us. Don't forget, uh, Wednesday, that's the 4th, at 6 p.m., the introductory uh, seminar, which is free, at the Entrepreneur Center, You, Your Business Idea, How SCORE Can Help. And uh, don't forget, once again, if you're a veteran, whether you're uh, able-bodied or disabled, there is going to be a Veterans Business Initiative for you Thursday at the Entrepreneur Center, and that's uh, the 5th. And um, you can pre-register for that and find out more about it at Careers. Excuse me, career source central florida.com. And we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to What's the Score? That's right, folks. I am Christopher Hart along with Rich Jekyll. In the studio with us today is Kenneth Moradian, and he is the director of the Orlando U.S. Export Assistance Center, located at the Entrepreneur Center in the Fashion Square, along with Elizabeth Kreckel, who is the project coordinator of Central Florida International Trade Office, once again, located in the Entrepreneur Center. And probably there's an even easier phone number to remember if you want to make an appointment with either Kenneth or Elizabeth, and that would be 407-420-4848. Okay, it's the, the, the general phone number is 402-4844. But if you want to make an appointment with either one of these, it would be easier to call, to call 407-420-4848. And, Rich, you were going to say something before we took the break about the uh, Veterans uh, Business Initiative. I did, and I will. But first I want to clarify that 4848 is the Entrepreneur Center phone number. I got it. Okay, the administrator receptionist for the Entrepreneur Center. The 4844 is the SCORE administrator. Okay, which is thank you for clarifying. You're that. very welcome. And Please write it down because you'll forget it for next week. Yeah, you know, there you go. But <laughs> folks, you should have both of those numbers. All right, forty-eight forty-four is for score. Forty-eight forty-eight, forty-eight forty-eight is for the Entrepreneur Center. Uh, now, real quickly about the Veterans Business Initiative, if you want to say something. Yes, I'm going to do a five-minute intro on February fifth, and then we'll have a table there to discuss, you know, what your options are, you veterans out there. So you need to apply for this, and Chris is going to keep continually telling you the phone number to get on and register so you can be one of the hundred 
veterans that are going to be picking, picked for this program? Well, actually, I didn't give the phone number, but I will. Uh, the the web source is careersourcecentralflorida.com. You write all of that out, careersourcecentralflorida.com. The phone number is 407-420-4875. Four zero seven four two zero forty eight seventy five, and once again, we'll give that number out again. That's for the Vet- Veterans Business Initiative. Uh, Elizabeth and Ken, uh, Kenneth, are you going to be participating in the Veterans Business Initiative at all? Is that something that you'll be a part of? Um, no, actually, I hadn't planned to. Uh... Okay. Uh, and no. so, all, right, all right. But nonetheless, uh, if you're a veteran out there, uh, please take advantage of that. It begins Thursday the 5th, and you said it runs five days. Yeah, these guys will be available. Okay. I mean, they are agencies, like if we get a veteran and we're going to say, okay, you need to go see Elizabeth okay. over at the International Trade, right. or you need to make an appointment with Ken over at the U.S. Export. So they their resources will be available but they aren't one of the the key uh, go betweens. All right, with the veterans. Sorry, I wanted to clarify that. All right, let's say uh, uh, I'm someone who's been referred to you, Kenneth. Uh, what's the w- one of the common things uh, that uh, people come into your office that expect you to do or be able to do that is uh, uh, you know a false expectation? The most common thing, I think, is people assume that I can help them to start a company. I think there's actually an assumption behind that that's um, probably a little bit more problematic, But um, and that would be that somehow export is a different thing than uh, starting a business. But let's, let's deal with the initial issue. Um, my agency doesn't help people to start companies. We help establish companies to export. Uh, we don't do anything with import. We help U.S. companies and to export U.S. origin product. So um, the reality is, though, that export is not a separate business. It's a line of business. It's a, a revenue stream. And so many of the same processes involved in uh, starting any other kind of company are going to be common to starting an export-oriented business. Um, And so with that in mind, usually when people call me for assistance starting a company, I send them to SCORE. Uh, SCORE has an expertise in entrepreneurship that we don't have. And at the point that the company is export ready, they come back to us and we help them with uh, partner identification or partner qualification and other such things. So basically, if there's somebody out there with an idea or something like that, they need to go to SCORE first. You're looking for an established business that already has a product or service that is looking to take that international. Yeah, that's right. And uh, it has to be uh, U.S. source is really what we call it, but uh, basically about 51% U.S. origin or greater. You mean Mm. produced in the United States? Well, it can be produced in the United States in whole or in part. As long as it meets our criteria for U.S. source, then we can actually uh, get involved in promoting that product. What do you mean by source? Owners? Owners or No, uh, we're looking at uh, spending U.S. tax dollars to benefit U.S. companies that are producing stuff that has at least a majority of its uh, costs coming from U.S. sources. So um, if you took the price of the product and you excluded your profits, uh, that uh, that remainder there, it, do, it does at least 51% of that cost come from U.S. sources. If it does, we can help. If it doesn't, we will send them on to somebody Very else. Very interesting uh, fact. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, I know you haven't been over there as long as Kenneth has, but you've been there a while. What's the one, say, common uh, misconception people have when they come to your office? And once again, you're there to help people in the import-export business. Yeah, we're help, we're here to help people connect. We actually, a clarification, we help importers and okay. exporters. So that's okay. the difference with Ken. Ken is mostly focused on export-ready companies. Okay. So when they come to me, a lot of them are just looking for something new and maybe to start like an import-export business. Okay. And I would send them to score and see if they can... Start same, something there. Same. So, so same thing. You're looking for established businesses uh, who are either already in the import-export business, would that be fair to say, and people who are established in this country looking to get into import-export. Well, other questions I get, are, like they include how to import a product from Belize or Nigeria or things like that. So I also work with the Customs and Border Patrol and Customs Brokers. So I, I, I'm really a connecting point, and I'm a connector, so I connect them to different to different organizations. I don't really, like, I solve problems by educating others about what organization would be best for their company. Okay, so you're kind of like a, uh, 
uh, a talent scout, if you will. You're looking for what this person needs in their organization, and you say this is the right organization. We have a lot of great organizations already here in Central Florida, including the Small Business Development Center, which is also at the National Entrepreneur Center, and they work closely with Ken to help exporters. I see. And uh, once again, these other organizations, uh, are they uh, at nonprofit organizations? Do they provide these services for free? Yes, or a minimal cost. And, okay. Uh, Rich? Yeah, I was going to ask Elizabeth, you know, I heard that she was a, a big radio star when she was three. <laughs> she was selling <laughs> Girl, Girl Scout, Scout cookies. cookies. Is last that time that I've been true, on the radio, Elizabeth? yes. Because yes, <laughs> you sound very comfortable, oh, like yeah. an accomplished star there. So I just <laughs> a one-minute uh, commercial. i got to practice like a hundred times. I would like your autograph. she got to uh, start early there. All right. Uh, okay, so mainly, uh, folks... If you're just, you know, uh, toying with the idea of getting in the import-export business, uh, that's not what they're looking for at these offices. They're looking for businesses that are established. Now, however, the, in Elizabeth's case, you will you will direct them to people that can help them out. Yeah, like we, have, we have a, a group called Friends of International Trade, and these are people who are interested in international trade. They want to get involved. So we have educational seminars and, and things like that that might help them um, – Either network with other individuals or find out that this is not a path for them, but education. Okay, uh, real quickly, uh, each of your websites, Elizabeth. It's cfito.org, so Central Florida International Trade Office.org. Okay. It's the acronym. Okay, and uh, once again, we'll uh, we'll repeat these during the show. Uh, that's cf. I T O dot org C F I T O dot org for Elizabeth. And that's the central Florida international trade office. And uh, Kenneth yours, please export dot gov. That's easy. Export dot gov. Um, once again, uh, yours is on the federal level and that's you're right. looking to uh, help businesses to export because basically you're trying to promote businesses within the United States by finding markets on other shores, so to speak. That's right. Export is considered money into the U.S. economy, where import is considered money out of the U.S. economy. Uh, how uh, do other countries uh, cooperate with you in this, uh, in, with the federal government trying to facilitate this, to, to bring, say, products or goods into their countries? This is more like a game of hockey than it is um, a kumbaya moment. Um, okay. Other governments oh, have their holy own. Cow. Well, okay. Other governments have their own, um, you know, hockey team, if you want to think of it that way, and they're all looking to promote their own companies and their own countries' exports. So. You know, it's not necessarily a zero-sum game, right. but um, just as we don't promote foreign origin product in the United States or help U.S. companies to export or transship foreign origin stuff, um, you can't expect that from a foreign government vis-a-vis -vis U.S. origin stuff. Right. Uh, for that matter, if you're seeking to import into the United States um, and you want assistance marketing it, uh, we won't help you market a foreign origin item in the United States, but a foreign government through their embassy will for their own origin product if that makes sense and it does it makes a lot of sense and the reason i bring this up is you know if somebody's out there thinking you know uh you know I, i've got an, an aunt or somebody over in india that makes clothes or something and i want to import you're going to need help because you're you're playing in the deep end of the pool when you go into the international realm i, well, think. I mean you know yeah yes and no the u.s government will help in terms of regulatory compliance that is right. um what is the effective tax rate to clear it through customs and other things of that nature? We just won't help you to distribute the product. Right. You know. Um, but likewise, going out. But uh, going out, we'll help you on yeah. both ends with regulatory compliance, and we will help you to find agents, distributors, representatives, buyers, joint venture partners, et cetera. We'll help you to sell U.S. origin product in foreign markets. And, folks, I believe you me, that is a potent, you know, uh, advantage that you can have. Well, it's a big incentive for number one that you, yeah. A absolutely, and uh, it is a hockey field out there, or hockey game. game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. if you, I don't know what they call a ice, hockey ice <laughs> rink. <laughs> rink. There you go, hockey ice rink. Uh, thank you. Obviously, you've come from a state where they play hockey. Yeah, the Midwest, <laughs> Midwest, eh? <laughs> they play something here. They call it hockey. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> And uh, so once again, uh, this is a powerful tool that you could have in your belt, folks, uh, if you want to get into the export business or even if you're already in the export business. Right, Kenneth? Yeah, it's not it's not exclusively people who are new to export. We uh, divide the world into three parts, new to export, new to market and increase to market. So, you know, 
All right. So uh, any or all of them, <laughs> if you're in the export business or looking to get into the export business and you already have an established business, uh, Kenneth is the man you need to talk to. And once again, you need to uh, call the uh, the switchboard over there in order to set up an appointment with Kenneth. Uh, the number is four zero seven four two zero forty eight forty eight. Likewise, you can set up an appointment with Elizabeth by calling that number as well. Four zero seven four two zero forty eight forty eight. And uh, Elizabeth. You're working uh, more on the local level. Uh, well, I see we have to take another break, and it's a hard break. So when we come back, we'll, we'll pick up the conversation, and we'll begin to transition to tell you a little bit more about what they do offer you when you go into the office over there. All right, so don't forget, folks, you're listening to What's the Score. Please tell your family and friends all about us, and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to What's the Score? Thanks again for being with us, folks, and uh, we really appreciate you being out there. And by the way, if you have comments, questions, or suggestions about the show, and we appreciate what we've been getting, send them to score at nationalec.org. That's score at nationalec.org. Once again, SCORE is a national organization, so they do have a national website, simply SCORE.org, SCORE.org, and that's where they have a whole library full of stuff that can help you uh, no matter where you're at in your business. Uh, And also, of course, the local website is SCOREOrlando.org, SCOREOrlando.org, and that's where you keep uh, the archive of our show, isn't it, Rich Jekyll? That's correct. I mean, every one of these things is up there. Right. So And it's going to be labeled so you can see which subject is pertinent to you or your business, and then you can look up that show. There you go. And uh, that's at scoreorlando.org. Once again, I am Christopher Hart, and we're joined in the studio today by Kenneth Moradian, and he's the director, the local director of the Orlando U.S. Export Assistance Center, and Elizabeth Kreckel, who's the project coordinator for Central Florida International Trade Office. And uh, once again, welcome back to you guys. And you have your own seminar coming up. Yes, on February 11th. And that will be all day long at the Entrepreneur Center. Correct. And uh, that's from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. And it's entitled Discover the Benefits of Free Trade Agreements, in particular NAFTA, Free Trade Agreement with Colombia, South Korea, and Panama. Uh, and there is a charge for this, but it's only $25. And uh, you need to register at NAFTA. 211.eventbrite.com. That should be a great event. We have a speaker coming from out of state, and uh, he's uh, I've heard him. He's great, Mike Alaka, and he is uh, he has lots of experience and does a lot of training seminars on different topics, yeah. educational trade, which I think we re- really need in this in region in general. Okay, so if you're an importer, exporter, a traffic manager, uh, sales department people, shipping, receiving, compliance officers, financial officers. You need to be at this seminar, and you register at NAFTA two eleven two one one dot dot eventbrite dot com, or you can go to cfito dot org, and it's right on the front page. Well, let's just say that one cfito dot <laughs> org, and that'll direct you to Elizabeth's website anyway, Central Florida International Trade Office. So cfito dot org, and that's once again Wednesday, February the eleventh, from eight thirty to four thirty at the Natural National Entrepreneur Center, which is once again located in the Fashion Square Mall. And it's local. If you haven't been there, it's a real nice place. You can go visit. And it's right between Sears and J.C. Penney. All right. Uh, let's get back to the conversation. Um, Elizabeth, I was going to go to you. Uh, you uh, you you help people with both imports and exports. Mm-hmm. And what you're trying to do is bring uh, businesses just in general to the Central Florida area. Is that the whole idea here? We're trying to help Central Florida companies get involved in international trade or or accelerate their international trade. Uh, We developed the regional database of over 5,600 companies that are involved already in Central Florida in uh, international trade. Mostly uh, our databases include via water. So we were kind of studying what ports are used in uh, the state of Florida and why Central Florida uses Jacksonville over, say, Port Canaveral and things like that. Because forty percent of all uh, waterborne shipments come in and leave from Port of Jacksonville. All right, let's... from Central Florida, the Central Florida companies. Like so, so we not only do that kind of research. The database is, is available to do some. Like we had a um, a counselor from SCORE, and he wanted to know manufacturers involved in exporting from Seminole County. So we can provide you a list of those companies in Seminole County. 
if you come and see. So you have a vast database. Yes, we have a database. But not only do we do research, we've also uh, we've worked together with actually um, the U.S. Export Assistance Center, and we hosted uh, CFITO hosted four trade missions last year, including like a, a hardware expo from Brazil. We got Central Florida companies um, interested in exporting their hardware. Um, products to Brazil, and same way we did it with um, food and beverage. Uh, a group from China came, and we had an expo, and Central Florida companies showed their good like products there. So they get a chance to demonstrate their products. <clears throat> excuse me, to retailers, if you will, in, at the other end. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, in China, they are really interested in. Uh, I don't food. They were interested in in Florida companies who want to export their food to to uh, Chengdu. China. Is that right? Yeah. Um, obviously, this is something that you promote as well, uh, Kenneth. Um, mm-hmm. Do you uh, constantly work in conjunction with each other's office? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, to the extent that it's appropriate to work with any of the partners at the Entrepreneur Center or with the state of Florida's economic development organization, Enterprise Florida, uh, with World Trade Centers or other such entities, we partner as, you know, as appropriate. So it just depends upon the, the program or the initiative and, and what makes sense. Okay, and this is fully funded by the federal government. That's right. And um, our federal you, agency, we're employees of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Has, has your budget uh, been increased, decreased? What are you work, dealing with uh, at the office down there? Because it sounds like you're you're uh, a very uh, pro business part of the government. We are, but uh, international trade has uh, wide bipartisan support. That's why. I was so getting that. yeah, yeah, it's not really a, a blue or red issue or Democrat Republican, however you want to characterize the issue. Um, it's international trade is good for the U.S. economy. As a matter of fact, the new Congress, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that uh, uh, it seems that they can perhaps work out with the president are a couple of free trade agreements. Um, in your perspective, the more free trade agreements, the better. Does that is it because a lot of people's perception is that we lose jobs, that the net outcome is that we lose jobs rather than gain jobs. Right. The administration's interested in, in fair trade agreements. Not simply free trade agreements. Did I say so free trade? I'm it, sorry. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean, it really is the the, the same thing in, in some regards. But certainly, both the administration and Congress are interested in leveling the playing field and ensuring that U.S. companies aren't at a disadvantage for doing the right thing. Do you see that a lot up close? Uh, what in is that words, that I'm seeing up close? Uh, our companies being disadvantaged by other countries, governments uh, interfer- in, uh, interfering well, in the marketplace, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, the reality is that. Um, you know, foreign governments play by different rules according to which government you're talking about. So, you know, it's not really a one-size-fits-all answer. There are countries that are easier to export to or that have more similar um, standards for, uh, you know, ethics, business ethics and, and whatnot. So, um, and it's not necessarily linked to the existence or non-existence of a trade agreement. A lot of it has to do with uh indigenous culture and whatnot or this is this some of the things that you might discuss with someone who comes into your office in other words you know these are some of the areas of the world you may not want to go in that sort of well, thing. well i never tell people what's right for them because they're it's hard to know their um you know threshold for pain you know um there are more there are easier markets to export to and, and more difficult markets to export to and, um, you know, there are markets that are right or wrong for a, a company's expertise or their their product line, et cetera. So it's it's more nuanced than say, oh, beware of Xanadu because, you know, well, they're just not nice people or something. The reason I ask is people need to have sort of a guide to go through the forest. And that's more or less well, what you're yeah, offering. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, look, you know, I've never exported before and I want to start with China and my product is extremely vulnerable to intellectual property theft, then, yeah, we're probably going to have a discussion about you know, intellectual property in China and whether they uh, can patent their item, for example, in China, if it can be protected by trade secret, whether they can mask the formula adequately, um, you know, have they registered their trademark there and certain things like that. If they start bulking and and wincing when we're starting this conversation, China is not their market. Right. Uh, Uh, right. I think another program, Ken could talk more about this, but is the, um, the Small Business Development Center's program. They actually have an export marketing plan they will come out to your company, do an assessment. If you, There's a few qualifications you have to for this program, but it's with Enterprise Florida. And uh, they look at your – and then they develop your uh, export marketing plan, and it shows what markets your product will have a good chance of succeeding in. 
and maybe Ken can discuss it a little more. Uh, well, back, basically, this would be part of what you called uh, during the break a, a workflow, mm-hmm. more or less. Uh, please tell our audience what you mean by that. Well, I was thinking more in terms of internal to the Entrepreneur Center. What do you do with somebody who walks through the door as a newborn? You know what I mean? They, right. they have yet to... to um, actually been spanked and cry right so <laughs> you know they they need to know do i even want to be a business you know what does that mean uh or they've decided they want to be a business but they don't know what kind of business they want to be um there's an expertise in entrepreneurship that goes even beyond should i be in business but what's the difference between being an llc or or sure. uh, you know an, an lp S-corp. or or whatever an s corp you know, that's not an expertise I have, and I'm not paid right. to create instability in the economy by, you know, telling people stuff I don't know. <laughs> so I sign them to score for that. Right. And at the point that the, the newborn is now a toddler, you know, or perhaps even, um, you know, a grammar school kid, they're established in business. They've been in business for like three years or something. They have $500,000 in revenue, and, you know, they're... They're, they're a little bit further along, but they want to know, you know, uh, what really are the products of my product line? Which ones are the ones that are, are most exportable? Um, you know, what export markets make sense? Uh, theoretically, I could do that with them, but the reality is that I'm, I'm overwhelmed. So what the state of Florida has done in partnership with the SBDC is come up with an export marketing plan service, which is an involved in depth consulting service uh, administered by the Small Business Development Center that results in a 70 to 100 page report. Which is what Elizabeth was just talking very, about. Very, very valuable report. Um, yeah. Anyway, and at the point that they have a little bit more direction, I can help them with things like, um, you know, do I need an export license to get this out of the United States? Or I can help them with issues of intellectual property protection or standards conformity. And I can also help them to find business partners overseas, agents, distributors, representatives, etc. Uh, my agency is the commercial section of a U.S. embassy. We're in 80 some odd countries and uh, their actual U.S. Department of Commerce employees. So we actually can help people to find distribution or defend their commercial interests in a foreign market. So if I want to know where will my product serve uh, or go sell. over best, sell the best, sell the best, right, I'd go to Elizabeth first to find out which where are our markets overseas. Well, well she's going to send you, use, yeah. she's going to send you to the small business development center. Yeah, yeah. And they're going right. to develop right. the plan but for you. first I might go to Elizabeth. And at, least, could. and at least introduce yeah. yourself and say, you know, and I'm interested in that. For that matter, and... you could come to me. And, and I would, the difference is that what the SBDC is going to do is rigorous. They have MBAs from very credible universities. They are employees, actually, of the University of Central Florida College of Business, and they bring all those resources to play. And this is what two dedicated staffers do all day long. By contrast, I handle uh, 11 counties in central Florida. Over 50% of Florida's manufacturing, and manufacturing isn't the only thing that's exported. There are services and technology and stuff. Right. I can't take that kind of time, even if I had the resources to match what the SBDC can do. So it's a far yeah, more powerful but, resource. Okay, and don't forget, they have a seminar coming up Wednesday, February the 11th. Discover the benefits of free trade agreements, and you can go to Elizabeth's website, CFIT org and uh, pre-register for that. The tickets are $25. It'll be all day long from 8.30 to 4.30 at the National Entrepreneur Center in the Fashion Square Mall. Uh, once again, that website is cfito.org. Please don't go away because we're coming right back with more of What's the Score? Welcome back to What's the Score? Once again, folks, thank you for being with us. And please tell all your friends and family about us. And if you'd like to hear this show again, or if you'd like to tell somebody to listen to this show and they don't catch it on the radio, they can go to scoreorlando.org and just check out the archive there. Every one of our programs so far has been put up there at scoreorlando.org. Don't forget the seminar, the free seminar, Your Business Idea, How Score Can Help, which is free, which will be Wednesday evening, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's this Wednesday, February 4th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And don't forget, if you're a veteran out there, the Veterans Business Initiative, which begins the next day, February 5th, at the Entrepreneur Center. And uh, you can go to their website and uh, register for that. And uh, and you can give them a call. By the way, the website is careersourcecentralflorida.com, careersourcecentralflorida.com, or call them at 407 420 4875. That's for the Veterans Business Initiative, 407 420 4875. Also, if you would like to make an appointment with uh, Elizabeth or Kenneth, and you think you're at that stage where uh, they could be of big help to you, 
and give them a call uh, at the uh, Entrepreneur Center and make, a, and make an appointment, if you will. And that phone number the, for the uh, switchboard is 407-420-4848. Real easy to remember, 407-420-4848. And uh, they, once again, they have the free trade agreement seminar coming up, and uh, that's the February the 11th from 8.30 to 4.30 at the Entrepreneur Center. And you can register for that find out more about it at cfito.org. That's uh, Elizabeth's website for her office, Central Florida International Trade Office, cfito.org. Uh, real quickly, uh, Kenneth, you said there's an event coming up in Miami, uh, I believe, later on. In, in Mi- May. In mm-hmm. May. And what's it going to be about real quickly? It's called Discover Global Markets, the Americas, and we are bringing in experts on Latin America to uh, provide um, specialized topics, programming specialized topics, and we're also bringing in the senior officers from U.S. embassies throughout the region uh, to provide business counseling and um, and one-on-one assistance. So it's it's an excellent event, and uh, it's posted on our website, export.gov. I, I went to that uh, an event like that in Charlotte in just last year, and uh, it was amazing. It was a great event. All right. Well done. All right. So uh, well, I want to go back to you, Elizabeth. Um, you're, you said you were funded by local government and which bank? Orange County government and, and uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. And how new is your office? <laughs> we held our ribbon cutting last March. So this is just a, a recent joint venture that the bank and the county in, entered into? Yes. Uh, now, uh, obviously, since it's, it's brand new, uh, I can't really ask you how the funding is going. But uh, have you, uh, you know, been getting a lot of people come to your office? Yes, we, we had about uh, over 1,200 uh, inquiries last year about uh, different trade questions and they came in attendance at educational events well this seems once again to be a a good idea that uh, the government is working with private organizations to promote business here in the united states in your case import and export business um is it working out well so far definitely i think it's it's needed i think uh I, I have a master's in international affairs and an MBA, and I would say I didn't get any education on all these topics that I think people should know about. And with 95% of consumers uh, living out uh, are not Americans, I think it's very important that there's so many people. There's a huge market outside the United States. Uh, now, obviously, one of the questions I'm sure on some of our listeners' minds, uh, and this would go for both of you, Kenneth and Elizabeth, do you provide any kind of funding or do you direct people to where they can get funding for their projects? Elizabeth, I'll start with you. I do not. Uh, well, I'm, your organization I, does we not. Have, uh, we have had financing, like learn to how to finance through XM Bank or uh, the Florida Export Finance Corporation or um, different various local banks. So we show you, but we but um, ac- we show you ways to get to uh, to access it. We, we, in, in other words, you don't lend money, right, but correct. you can steer people to the people correct. who do lend money. Is, is is that the case with you, Kenneth? Yeah, we don't lend money and we don't have grants. Um, Enterprise Florida has some grants to promote Florida origin exports. Um, and some of those grants are actually administered by Enterprise Florida directly or um, through the SBDC for the Export Marketing Plan Service. But um, as the federal government, um, we do have loan programs uh, that are administered by the Small Business Administration. Okay. Um, and we also have export insurance products that can be used to insure your foreign receivables and thereby collateralize them and borrow against them. Um, also can be used to offer open account terms to your foreign buyer and not be worried about whether you get paid. Uh, but then they can also, Exxon Bank can also insure a U.S. commercial bank's loan to a foreign buyer, which makes it possible for them to buy from you. So it's a little bit... Um, of a um, a complicated response to your question, but yeah, there's stuff out there. No, it's not from my agency directly. Well, this is we had um, the, the the SBA. Yeah. SBA yeah, has an Export Express program, which is designed to help exporting companies, especially small, small and medium sized enterprises, to um, obtain working capital. And yeah. now, where would I go for this Enterprise Florida? I hear oh, a lot about Florida. talk about this, but I don't know anything. You Enterprise know, where to Florida go. is a public-private corporation. Um, it's the state's economic development organization, so it's the former Florida Department of Commerce. Oh, okay. And um, their headquarters is here in Orlando, and um, their website is Enterprise Florida, as one, one run-on word, enterpriseflorida.com, um, I think, actually, come to think of it. And uh, so, anyway... 
Um, that's where you can find stuff from Enterprise Florida. Um, whether it has anything about uh, any of their grant programs uh, on their website, that I don't know. But grants are for things like companies that um, are in targeted industry sectors mm-hmm. that have never exhibited at a given trade show overseas to offset some of their costs for exhibiting there okay. or to offset some of the costs of having an export marketing plan developed by the um, Small Business Development Center uh, or other such things like that. Okay. Very way, specific grants. Go ahead, Rich. And by the way, does the SBDC charge... For developing that plan? They do, $500. It's actually, a, the full cost is $3,500, but there's a grant from Enterprise Florida that pays uh, $3,000 of the cost, so the balance is 500 bucks. Okay. And uh, on the back end, uh, they'll also grant a gold key or a participation in an Enterprise Florida export sales mission or participation in a foreign trade show. So for $500, you're getting quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, once again, uh, we're talking with Kenneth Moradian, and uh, you can get make an appointment with Kenneth at four two, excuse me, 407-420-4848 and Elizabeth Kreckel, and you can make an appointment with her at 407-420-4848. And uh, Elizabeth is uh, working with, uh, do you just work with Orange County businesses? You say this is being funded by Orange County? That's a good question. No, it, we are funded by Orange County, but we do have a six-county area, which includes Osceola, Seminole, Brevard, Volusia, Lake, and Uh, Orange. And Orange. And I I take it all these will be listed on your website? Yes. Okay. And uh, obviously, uh, you would help anybody in the state of Florida, I take it, Ken? Well, no, actually, my territory is 11 counties, and I would okay. enumerate them all, but it's probably more Easier than just your... Go to the website. Yeah, just yeah I mean, go. we have a, an office in Jacksonville that covers, basically, if you drew a line from, like, Flagler County out to the Gulf of Mexico, they, right. they handle everything north of that all the way to the Alabama border. Okay. If you draw a, a diagonal line from the bottom of Brevard County uh, to just north of Tampa, uh, you know, that little wedge there is my territory. And then if you take the balance of Florida and split it in half. The western half is handled from Clearwater, and the eastern half is handled from Fort Lauderdale with a satellite office in Miami. Okay. Right. I've, Rich, go ahead. Now, I've got a simple question for you guys. I am a small business. I'm a C or an S corporation. I've got my incorporated license, so I'm all set in a set. I want to go and buy uh, clothes from a wholesale distributor like BJ's, Costco, anything like that, and export it out to another company through my sister who happens to be in Argentina. Okay, what do I do? Well, the first thing I would do if I were you is to contact the right holder to the the clothing lines that you're sending to Argentina to make sure that you have their permission to be distributing their branded items Ah. there because you could end up getting into legal problems in Argentina and separately in the U.S. for violating trademark or or, uh, design patents, etc. being that it's your sister in Argentina, I think was the the scenario. Uh, on some levels, you have distribution, but um, I think that in as much as it's probably common for people to do that sort of thing, I don't know if that's the most sophisticated route. Just because it's your sister doesn't mean she knows anything about distributing clothing there or anything uh, in terms of having contacts and whatnot. So. Um, you might want to evaluate whether that's a good idea. And I also usually forewarn people against going to business with family or close friends because when it comes to making difficult decisions, that complicates things. You know, so, but uh, we can help a company to understand the regulatory requirements to get clothing into uh, Argentina, and we can also help them to identify or qualify distribution in Argentina. All right, so you see, folks, uh, that these are the people you need to talk to, excuse me, if you're in or getting into the import and or export business, uh, in particular, in Ken's case, the export business. Once again, Kenneth Moradian, the director of Orlando U.S. Export Assistance Center, a federally funded program here in Orlando. His website is export.gov. That's export.gov. If you'd like to make an appointment with Kenneth, you can do so at 407-420-4848. Also, Elizabeth Kreckel, who is the project coordinator of Central Florida International Trade Office, you can as well make an appointment with her at 420-4848. And her website is cfito.org, cfito.org. If you're new to the import-export biz, these are the folks you need to talk to. And uh, once again, they are located in the Entrepreneur Center in the Fashion Square. They have a seminar coming up entitled Discover the Free Benefits of Free Trade, excuse me, Discover the Benefits of Free Trade Agreements. 
I keep trying to stick that word free in there. Free trade agreements, and uh, that's on Wednesday, February the 11th from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at the Entrepreneur Center. 25 bucks is the cost of the tickets, and you can get those at cfito.org. And please tell them you heard about it on our show. And one reason why they're on this show, folks, is because radio is still one of the most effective ways to reach a broad section of the community. Did you know that more people still listen to radio for their news and that News Talk Radio is the most listened to radio format in the United States? That's right, folks, and that's why we do it. And if you would like to be uh, in the radio business, so to speak, if you would like to either advertise on radio or even have your own radio show like this one, you need to talk to Bill Files, the station manager at Salem Communications right here in Orlando, Florida. Bill's phone number is 407-618-1760. That's Bill Files, 407-618-1760. He'd love to have you come down, introduce you around, give you a tour of the stations. That's right. They have three stations here, and uh, it's very affordable. And uh, so please give Bill a call at 407-618-1760 and tell him you heard all about it on What's the Score. Rich, we're all out of time this week, but uh, we'll have a big show once again next week, I assume. Yeah, I wanted to remind our listeners out there that all these shows are for them, and the guests we have are for the benefit of the small business community. So with that, we skimmed it. All right. And uh, this uh, show is being sponsored by Salem Communications as a public service to you. All right. That's going to do it for this week. Elizabeth, Kenneth, thanks for being with us. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Thanks Yo. for having us. All right. And, Rich, we'll be seeing you next week. Yes, you will. Bye, everybody.